nice to be here in Nashville. Look at me. I went out and got myself a cowboy shirt, right? Fit in with all you guys coming in from your ranches, huh? Living out there in the barns. So you know what you're doing? You're like, I'm working on an app, okay? To launch this website. Um, oh, shit. What a fucked up time this is, huh? It's so weird to tape a special right before a presidential election, especially like one like this. Like, this is literally like what is going to happen. You know? How the fuck did we end up with these two? Jesus Christ. This is like the first week of American Idol. You know? It's like, really? This is what I got? Take his coat! Take his coat! Whatever the hell she's doing, you know? It's unbelievable. You either got a racist dope or, like, the devil. Like, that's the choices. I just walk up and grab it. I just grab it. All right? Is that what you do? You fucking lunatic. I'm going to build a wall. I'm going to build a wall. I love people thinking he's actually going to do that. You really? Really? You're going to do that? You're going to build a wall from fucking California to Texas. You're going to do this. Have you ever done that drive? Because I've done that drive. Took the 10 east out of Los Angeles. That is a two-day drive, 80 miles an hour. Ah! Ah! Wall, wall, wall. You're in there like John Goodman in Raising Arizona. Ah! Just driving. Like, how many times are you going to go to Home Depot to build this thing? You actually think you're going to get this done. Look at the Freedom Tower. We actually wanted that shit, and it took almost 15 years to get it done. Half the people don't even want this fucking thing. I'm telling you, by the time they finished it, this country would be so fucked up, we're going to be the ones going over it. Listen, dude, they got, they got real sugar. They got real sugar in the Coke. I heard on the other side, the orange crush tastes like it did in 1978. Remember that two-year period when it was actually delicious? Yeah, so you got him, and then you got Hillary, and all the, Hillary's just like a made guy. He's the made fucking guy. Everybody thinks like, you know, she dresses like a real estate agent, you know, nothing to worry about. She's a fucking made guy. She's going to give him the wars. She's going to microchip the babies. Face out the cash. She's not going to do it, but she's going to keep steering it in that direction, privatizing water. Water's not a basic human right. She's going <laughs> to go through the whole fucking thing, that psycho fucking thing that you do when you go after that kind of power. you got to put it all over here in a little box. All your evil is you're just sitting there fucking smiling, knowing what's really going on. As you're talking to Joe Sixpack, he puts his pants on one leg at a time. No, it's so fucking, you know, it's unreal. Like, I don't know. <laughs> These are the two worst choices ever. Trump, if he wasn't, if he wasn't so fucking racist, if he wasn't so racist, I can deal with the pussy grabbing. That's not in my world. I'm selfish, like every other voter, all right? If he wasn't so fucking racist, he would actually scare me a little less because he's so obviously a dope. He's so dumb, I don't think he could get away with anything. You know what he reminds me of? You ever watch Law and Order, and they make an arrest in, like, within the first 15 minutes? You know, and they're trying to get you to think, ah, we got him, we got him. He's just looking at your watch, you're like, dude, there's no way this guy did this shit. <laughs> there's, like, another 45 minutes left. This can't be the guy. Who's the real guy? And that's what fucking Hilly, she fucking comes walking in. Yeah, she goes to those Bilderberg meetings, you know, where they dress up like pheasants and they fuck each other, right? Sacrifice some employee from a Best Buy. Fight over his name tag for a trophy, right? <laughs> Who do you pick? I got no idea. So I've just been, like, regressing. Like, I can't deal with this shit. I just want to hit pause. I don't want this election to fucking happen. So I've just been regressing, and I'm just watching the dumbest shit I possibly can, you know, morning time, those stupid talk shows to get soccer mom's day started. 
And now they have those, all those non-thinking stories. You know, you love him, he's your best friend, but did you ever wonder what does your dog do when you're not home? <laughs> the next video may surprise you. And I just fill it up, fill up my brain with this dumb shit. I don't want to deal with what's really going on. Nationwide heroin epidemic, fuck that! It's National Taco Day! We got Tony from Tony's Taco. Tony, what is it that makes a great taco? Well, it's all about starting out with the tortilla. Oh, yeah. Watching them making pancakes and all that shit. Talking to the ladies, talking about body issues. They're always talking about body issues. That's the dumbest one ever. When they talk about Hollywood going like, Hollywood, they, they create these impossible body images, blah, blah, blah. You know, that whole thing, the plus size actress, right? The fatties. You know? That's like a big thing. They're, they're sick of being treated like fat people. I don't know what it is they're doing. They're going on the cover of magazines now, just like showing how fat they are, wearing a little bit amount of clothes. And everybody's like hyping them up, like, oh my God, that's so brave. That's so courageous. I'm not saying it doesn't take balls, but that's a bit of an overreach with the word brave. Right? Like, what am I supposed to do if I ever see a fireman running out of a building carrying a baby and an old lady? Am I going to sit there like, oh my God, you're like a fat actress that takes her shirt off to do a magazine shoot to promote the movie she's in. Now look, I know you're not supposed to make fun of fat people. I understand, all right? I don't know why, though. Why? They're not a race. They're not a religion. It's totally curable. Eat an apple and go for a walk, you know? Why are you yelling at everybody else? What the fuck are you giving me shit for? All right? You put the cookies in there. I didn't. How is this my problem? Jesus Christ, you ate your way in, you can walk your way out, all right? And just slowly start shedding the pounds. Shove some fucking lettuce in there instead of a bunch of ho-hos, and it's, it's going to come down, and then you're on my side of the fence, right? Join me. Come on, say it with me. Shame. Shame. Right? <laughs> I know, you're not supposed to shame, you're not supposed to fat shame, you're not supposed to slut shame. They're like shaming, shaming. Like people aren't supposed to walk around with any shame. It's like a legitimate human emotion, but you're not supposed to feel it at all. You know, you're supposed to just walk around like a dictator, just not, not, you're not going to feel any shame. You never felt shame. You never had a, such a bad fucking night the next morning, you, you, you woke up, you couldn't even look yourself in the mirror. When you went to go brush your teeth, you looked up, you're like, oh, you fucking piece of shit. Wow. Wow, even for you, that was bad. Lights out, curtains drawn, until at least two in the afternoon before I can even look at you, you fucking piece of shit. Yeah, you're supposed to have no shame. That's the new world. You're just going to walk around sucking dick, you know, eating cookies, and just show up. And nobody's supposed to say anything. No one's supposed to have an opinion. Like, wow, that's, that's going to go off the rails pretty soon. I know, it's probably mean to do this stuff, but, like, you can only have so much sympathy. There's so much, so much stuff you can care about. You know what happened to me that changed my life? I did a gig in India, right? Unbelievably great people, but some of the stuff that I saw there, I'll never forget. I literally, I did a gig in India. I saw a toddler take a shit between two parked cars, walked away, no pants or parents, and then disappeared into the crowd like Hannibal Lecter at the end of Silence of the Lambs. It's one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen in my life. And then I come back to my country and it's like, oh, the studio said I lose 50 pounds to star in a movie. Well, then start running, you fat fuck. That's your big complaint in life. You know what it is? You know what it is, you know what it is about these fatties? You know what it really is? They have no respect for the amount of sacrifice and dedication it takes to truly get in, like, magazine-level shape, which is the, you ever try to get abs? You ever try to get all the abs and get that shit down here? You ever try to do it? It's fucking impossible! <laughs> Past the age of 19, you can't do it without tons of help. You gotta buy all these exercise tapes. You gotta read about nutrition. You gotta get a personal trainer, having you fucking running along. 
He needs like your own chef, and he's like, okay, don't eat it yet, don't eat it yet. All right, now, eat it, start consuming it. All right, stop, slow down, stop, stop, spit it out, spit it out! I told you to stop! Get on the electrical! Now you like that Brussels sprout? Don't you like that Brussels sprout? Because now you're paying for it! It's a fucking miserable experience. Just walking around, your whole body's eating yourself. You know, you want some cake? No! No, I'll just take a salad! Balsamic vinaigrette on the side, no croutons! Oh my god! When is the photo shoot? I want to kill myself! It's horrible! You ever try to get fat? No! You don't have to! It's effortless! You can fucking lay on your back, watching your favorite show, just shoveling shit down your throat! What are you doing? I'm getting fat! I'm getting fat! You got a trainer? Don't need one! It's natural! I just eat everything that makes my sugar salt go like, yeah, woo, yeah. Comes right in, nice roll of fucking flab. No, it's ridiculous. Like, I know nobody wants to be fat, so I'm not shitting on you about that. But don't fucking come at me like it's my problem and I need to fucking rewire myself. No, you're overweight, okay? There's plenty of things that can help you out. This is, everybody's got something to deal with. I'm a fucking lunatic with my temper. This is something I have to deal with. I do. You know, you, you can't fucking stop eating pork chops. That's something you have to fucking deal with. I don't have to completely rewire myself. You know what it is? It's just a bunch of sixes pissed off that they're not getting treated like a ten. You know, at some point, you just got to acknowledge what you are. You're a six. I'm sorry, all right? Nobody jerks off to a six. That's the deal. Unless you work with her. If you work with her, you know, she's got that one outfit, you know, it just does something for you. You're working close quarters, so there's, you know what a shampoo smells like? There's an intimacy. There's an intimacy there. All right? I don't know what women rub one out to, but I know it ain't me. All right? This is a fantasy. That's why I don't feel bad about trashing them. It's like, yeah, yeah, this is all coming from, I'm a strong five. All right? That's where I am. So I still feel like I'm punching up here. You know? Honestly, people, I'm a bald, red-headed male. You don't think there's a glass ceiling on the kinds of parts I can get in Hollywood? Really? You think I'm ever going to be the lead in a romantic comedy? That ain't happening even if I'm booking the movie. I want to make the money back. That's the thing. That's it's show business. There's a million dollars on this film, okay? We're trying to make fucking money. You just want to show up with fucking crumbs on the side of your face? Show up in shape, looking as fuckable as possible. Know your lines, ready to work. It's called being a professional, right? Dude, Ben Stiller had abs and meet the parents. There was no reason for him to do that. He just knew, I'm going to take my fucking shirt off. I don't want to get trashed. He was shredded. Yeah, go be a fucking postman. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. All right. No, you know what it is? It's just the ramblings of someone who's sliding into the back nine of his life. And I'm not understanding half the shit that's going on. You know? But you know one of the big things that really made me feel old was when McDonald's started making salads. That literally ripped my heart out. I'm like, they're, they're doing what? what? Now they have wraps. And they're doing all of this shit. You know what it was? was I shape people complain to them. That you're like, oh, you don't have any healthy options. It's like, dude, this is McDonald's. This shit is poison. Who the fuck comes here to get in shape? Whenever I get McDonald's, I have a whole plan. At my age, I'm 48 years old. I know what I'm going to order. I'm going to go in there. It's going to taste great. 20 minutes later, I'm going to want to kill myself. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to the gym tomorrow. I'm going to the gym tomorrow. And no matter how much I say that, I woke up the demon in me. I woke up the demon and all that grease is just coursing through my veins. And no matter how much I want to go to the gym, there's going to be this other voice going, dude, get an Egg McMuffin. Go down there and get an Egg McMuffin. And I'm going to sit up like the Manchurian candidate. Okay, we're going to McDonald's. It's my in-shape voice is in the back going, no, what are we doing? Go to the gym. And I'm just going to drive right down. Right? I know what it is. But somehow, out of shape people somehow got, that made them, they had to fucking blame. They had to have more healthy shit because they're the reason why everybody's fat. How come they have to do it? What about Ben and Jerry's? How come they don't have to put a little kale in their ice cream? Why is that? Oh, because you're a couple of hippies, man. They're like, 
making ice cream. They're going after Big Bad McDonald's. You know, it's just... Who the fuck goes to McDonald's to get in shape? And don't give me that horse shit that eating healthy is, 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 is expensive. It isn't. Go to a fucking supermarket. They're throwing the vegetables at you. Here's celery. Get it the fuck out of here. 70 cents. 25 cents for a banana. Whatever the fuck you want. Get it out of here. Before it goes bad. No, it's fucked up. They somehow convinced them that, that you know, McDonald's is the reason why I'm out of shape. I would have got a salad, but you didn't have the option, so I was like, well, I guess I gotta get 52 Big Macs. <laughs> Thanks a lot, McDonald's. It's like, dude, you're an adult. It's not their job to babysit you. They're a fucking business. If you order 50 sandwiches, they're gonna give it to you. It's your job to not do it, you fucking dope. Right? I don't know. Sorry. I know. McDonald's, McDonald's exists for two reasons, okay? It's for drunk people and it's for children, all right? That's what this thing is. You know, you're in your car, your kids won't shut the hell up, you go to the drive-thru. You go to the drive-thru, you get a couple of poison burgers, you throw it down their throats, their little systems can't handle it. They start... They start nodding off. And you're up front, you're bigger, you can handle a bigger dose of poison, you know what I mean? Pop in your Death Leopard cassette, you have a little moment for yourself. Yeah, that's what it's for. It's for your kids, and it's for drunk people. Like, how many times have you driven out to a bar going, I'm just going to have one, all of a sudden you had like 11, right? And you're hammered, and you're thinking, but you know, but you're responsible. You're drunk, but you're responsible. You're like, God damn it, I drove my car here tonight. God damn it, I'm driving it home, all right? I'm not going to burden this place of business by taking up a parking space in this completely empty parking lot for the next six hours. I am not advocating drinking and driving, but I will tell you there's nothing better than when all your friends and family know you're hammered. There's nothing better than that walk to the car. It's incredible. Women are screaming, people tearing at your clothes. You feel like you're in the Beatles. Oh my God, no! Stop it! You're like, no autographs! I'm sorry, I have to go! I'll be back! Get him off me! And you, you get in the car, and everybody's screaming, get in the fucking car! You're fine! I had a car eight years, I know! I can almost see my house! Just get in the fucking car! You gotta make the cops come. Get in the fucking car. I swear to God, just get in the fucking car. Oh, take your seatbelt off, you fucking Mary. I'm going right down the street. Right? And then what happens? You get out on the road, you realize you're way more hammered than you thought. Who was always there for you? McDonald's with the drive through The 24-hour drive through You could just pull in and hide in plain sight. Right? And that little sad traffic jam of divorcees, shut-ins, people who go to Comic-Con, right? You just pull in and just stop. You can take a little nap. It's like, damn, thank you, thank you, right? You pull around. That's what it was all about. And now all of a sudden, they're the reason this country's out of shape, you know? They've had McDonald's my whole life. People weren't this fucking fat, Right? It's not their fault. You can't pin it on them. But McDonald's fucked up. They fucked up because they gave in to out-of-shape people. And they said, all right, fine, fine. It's our fault. We'll start making salads. And then they got on their heels. They got on their heels. Everybody sensed it. And now look at them. Okay? Four or five years later, now they gotta make they got to make breakfast all day. Right? Because you know what happened? All the potheads showed up going, well, hey, man, if you're going to make him a salad, like... Like, what if I want, like, a breakfast thingy, and it's, like, it's not breakfast, like, you're going to hook him up, but you're not going to hook me up? That's, that's like food racism or something, man. I just, I just don't understand. Like, fine, we'll start making, we'll make the breakfast. They just completely lost their way. I swear to God, dude, if I was running that corporation, this is what I would do. You know what I would do? I'd bring that clown back. Right? I bring the clown back, okay, and I, I just have that thing. Just look right down the barrel of the camera. Have a little bit of dry ice in the background. You just come right in tight on his face. And he just looks right in the camera and just goes, look. 
If you can't get your fat ass down here by 10.30 in the morning, you're getting a burger. All right? pancakes at three o'clock in the afternoon because you didn't blow all night with your friends and you're just getting your shit together all right make no mistake this is a burger joint it's always been a burger joint we did that breakfast thing as a favor you know we were just trying to freak out ihop oh oh we're doing it too we're doing it too your own mother won't make your pancakes at three o'clock in the afternoon okay so get your fat ass or your drugged up ass down here before 10.30. We decide. It's our place. We tell you what the fuck we're making. All right? That's it. Take him out. Then he pushes a kid on a swing. Something nice. So, anyways, by the time this special comes out, another election will have come and gone. And it's just... God knows who we picked. And it's another one. They're not going to fucking talk about anything. The oceans are dying. They just said the Great Barrier Reef is dead. You know, genetically altered food. There's too many fucking people. I don't even know what they're just talking about. A bunch of shit. You know, Bruce has to drop a deuce. Where is he going to go? Which bathroom should this guy? It's like, I don't give a shit. This guy has enough money to literally have a porta potty rickshaw running behind him. How are you going to eliminate a couple billion fucking people? You never think about that shit? You know, they never talk to us about it. You know they talk about it behind closed doors, right? Bunch of creepy dudes all sitting around some giant table, right? They probably talk about it then, just sitting down after like, I trust everyone had their fun. <laughs> Let's get down to the task at hand. There are over 7.5 billion people on the planet. We're running out of fresh water. There won't be enough chicken to feed the others. Does anyone here any, have any suggestions on how to eliminate the pressures of the undesirables? Ah, yes, you. Number four. You may speak. Well, you know, what, uh, what if we, like, slowly cooked them at the airport? You know? You know, just throwing it out there. Like, what if you had, like, a revolving door-looking thing? You made them take their shoes off, they got in, and they, they stood up like that. And you just radiate them from head to toe. Once on the way out, once on the way back. Oh, yes, yes. I like that. I like the sound of that. And how would that work? Would you have it on low at first? Sear them like a tuna steak? They don't understand. You let the children go. We'll use them for slaves later, right? No old people. They'll die soon. Just people in the prime of their life. And gradually over the years, you increase it. You increase it. They start frothing at the mouth. They don't recognize the children. The property comes back to us. Oh. I trust everyone at this table flies private. Oh. Dude, my wife thinks I'm out of my mind because I think shit like that. But I think I'm right. Dude, I know they think about it. I know they think about it because I think about it. Every time I land in a city and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm just driving down the street and I see all these... I'm in the middle of a fucking traffic jam. That inner Mussolini comes out of me, Right? Like, what are all these people doing in my road? They must be eliminated! I don't know, like, how do you not fucking bring it up? It's because it would freak everybody out, you know, that you have to start maybe taking some measures to start thinning out the herd. You feel that, you feel that creepy, Bill? You, that's right, that's right, yeah. And what do you think, dude? You think you're gonna... You think you're in the fucking upper tier? You're in the, you're in the luxury boxes? Yeah, you spend a lot of time with yourself. You, you're doing a lot of nodding. I, I like what I think. I like what I think a lot. What I think is the way it should be. I understand what that's like. I live this fucking isolated life, man. I go on the road. I'm in green rooms and I just fucking, you know, just by myself all the time. You slowly go fucking crazy. 
I did a gig recently. I was in Ireland, and I was in the green room by myself, and I went to turn on the light. It was one of those pull switches, and it wound up around itself, looked like a little noose, and I immediately just thought, what if I just stuck my head in there and just... <laughs> and just turn the lights out, literally and figuratively. Was not thinking about killing myself at all the second I thought, hey, what if I just fucking did that? And then I looked in the mirror, I caught my eye, and we both laughed. <laughs> this wonderful little moment with myself no words needed to be spoken you know yeah so I think about the population all the times you've been telling on my specials I'm always talking about it and I think I got the plan because I know no 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 wait till you hear the plan first because a lot of people are going to die before you start hooting and hollering everybody thinks they're going to fucking make it right this is how you do it. This is how I would do it. Okay, first of all, you got to become a dictator. Okay? Because it's too late to try to be like, well, hey, man, maybe just have a couple. It's too fucking late. Someone's got to have the balls to take out the sickle. Start chopping some heads. So, here's my idea. I become dictator. When you become dictator, obviously, you got to murder everybody in power. Right? From the head all the way down to their goldfish. you got to kill everyone in the family. So they don't come back for their revenge, like in Godfather 2 or every karate movie you've ever seen, right? You gotta do it the way the Russians did it, where you don't find the skulls for a hundred fucking years. That's the way you do it. Then you take control of the media. I keep all of you guys media blacked out. You don't know what's going on unless I want you to know it, right? Big pictures of me. You gotta sing songs about me. If there's no passion in it, a black fan pulls up and you're never seen from again, all right? figure three to six months of that, everybody gets on the same page, and that's when I'd start thinning it out. This is how I would do it. I would just start randomly sinking cruise ships. Just hear me out. It's the way to go. It's the way to go. You get 2,500 to 3,000 people a whack, and I think it's a really good mix of people to get rid of. You know? the kinds of people that take a cruise. These aren't forward thinkers. These aren't seekers. They're not pivotal to our survival. You ever hear somebody coming back from a cruise? It's one of the worst stories you're ever going to hear. Because they don't do shit. They don't want to travel to another country, interact with the new culture, try to figure out the train system of the money. All they want to do is just sit on a fucking boat just drinking. That's all they want to do. Right? Worst story you'll ever hear. Hey, how was your cruise? Oh, it was great. I was fucking laying there. There was a DJ over here on the one and the two wooka wooka thing. Right? And then they had this chocolate fountain. It was like a fountain. But it was chocolate. And you stuck the toothpick in the food and you stuck it in the chocolate and you stuck it in your mouth. And then you'd be like, I want another drink. And they bring it all, you drink it, and it dribbles down. And it gathers in your navel, and you punch yourself. You get it in your mouth. Then every day around noon, we line up for lunch. What's for lunch? We don't know. We don't make decisions. Whatever they give us. I like all inclusive. You just have to think once. Can I write that number on this piece of paper? All right, tell me where to go. I'm telling you, if you guys could just get past the humanity of what I am suggesting. (laughs) If you could just get past it and maybe lose a couple of friends here or there. I'm telling you, you wouldn't miss them. You wouldn't miss, you know when you'd miss them? When you you went to to a baseball game and there wasn't those hundred people in the upper deck trying to get the wave going, right? You wouldn't have people getting mad because someone's sitting down during a song like, that's offensive to me, even though I don't know the issue. Right? Nashville, a little pulled back on that one. A little pulled back. It's about police brutality. It has nothing to do with you and your beautiful white world and mine, right? Just let it go. I don't give a fuck if you watched every episode of McHale's Navy. This is still not about you. It's not a military issue. telling you, you wouldn't fucking miss them. This is the deal, all right? I wouldn't just give the order to start sinking these cruise ships and then retire to my chambers with my mistresses and my whores, right? (laughs) Just banging away, wearing the whole uniform, the whole dictator uniform, everything except for the pants, right? 
compression socks with sock garters just banging away. My unearned medals just clanging off my chest. The big thing is to see how long I could fucking keep the hat on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I can't do that. That breeds resentment amongst your men. You got to lead them into battle. And I would. I would. I'd have my own sub. All right? I'd have my own sub, and I would hunt these cruise ships on a moonlit summer night. That's right. On a moonlit summer night, when sound carries, you know? You know those summer nights when your neighbor's talking about you? doesn't think you can hear him you're sitting on your porch going like oh yeah is that how it is so that's how it is right one of those nights and i'd be a sport about it i'd surface before i did it i'm armed they're not it's only fair right they see me i give them a little wink a little nod i'd have a little red baron class all right get the fuck out of here right but if you didn't see me it'd be game on and every moonlit summer night every summer i'd go out to harvest right that would be the deal I would just surface. <laughs> Und listen for the music, yeah? over, you strafe all the survivors, less people. And you want the greatest thing? No, it's all underwater. All the evidence is gone. All the evidence is gone. Every mass murderer throughout time is fucked up. They did it on land. You're gonna get caught. Where are you gonna put all of that, right? You do it out to sea. It all goes under, you know, nobody knows. I don't know what happened. I have no idea, right? No evidence. No evidence. Maybe, maybe like a flip-flop, right? Like an Ed Hardy shirt, just floating by. I'm controlling the media. Nobody knows about it, right? And as I sank the ships, I would be building exact replicas at the same time, right? So I'd be eliminating people while creating jobs. You guys have no fucking idea what's going on. Only you just realize, like, wow, man, the traffic's easing up. I'm getting into third gear at five o'clock at night. This is crazy. This is amazing. I don't know what's going on, but this bill guy's all right. You know, another buddy of mine got a job building ships. Can you fucking believe that? That industry is just blowing up. It's, it's crazy. Dude, I want to get a job down there. They're paying great, you know, make a little extra money. Then, yeah, who knows? Maybe you and me take a cruise. We'd have a good time, right? Get out there. That would, that's how it would work. That's how my ethnic cleansing would work. It wouldn't be based on race or religion. It just be based on people dumb enough to think that taking a cruise is actually traveling. <laughs> Technically, you're traveling, you know, but what are you seeing? Just a bunch of, look at the water! Oh my God! You can tell that's the Atlantic Ocean. That definitely does not look like the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so, yeah, look, admittedly, I'm a fucking psycho. And, uh, I am. Dude, I have dreams. I, have this, I had a dream two years ago that still haunts me. You know, you ever have one of those dreams where you think you woke up, but you didn't, you know, you're just sitting up and it feels like your house. I had one of those dreams, right? So I just, I sat up in bed and I looked over and there was this little girl in the corner of the room, no idea who she was. She was like three, four years old and she was talking to me, but I couldn't understand what she was saying. She was just standing in the corner, just going, I was like, what? What did you say? I... I can't hear you, sweetheart. You got, you got to come a little closer. She walked like halfway to the bed. She's like nodding her head, just going, 
big, like, the grudge eyes. I was, I was like, so you, gotta, you gotta come closer. She walks all the way up to the bed. I was just like, I couldn't hear you, sweetheart. What'd you say? What did you say? And she just nods and just goes, you're gonna kill yourself. I just sat up like, Aah! like, no, I'm not. No, I am not. My wife wakes up. What's the matter? I'm like, I just had like the most scary dream I've ever had in my life. It was horrible. She's like, was I in it? No, you self-centered jackass. Jesus Christ. Not everything is about you, sweetheart. I love you, but it's not all about you. Now, shut up. I'm gonna... I tried to go to sleep in the same position. So I'd run into that little girl again so I could just be like, look, you little shit. You don't go around saying that to people. Now, I'm not going to kill myself. I don't know what that dream meant, you know, because you dream in metaphors, man. You know, so, I don't know. It just freaks me out, though, you know. Disturbs my wife and shit. But, you know, there is one good thing about being a psycho, you know. One of the great things about being a psycho is you can spot another psycho from a mile away. You know, that's a really great thing. I can spot him, you know, it's, it's in the eyes. Never look at the costume. Nice people look at the costume. They'll see somebody in, like, dad jeans, you know, pushing their kid on the swing, you know, the whole nerdy sweater. Hey, how you doing? You believe the summer's already over? I mean, this is crazy, right? Oh, this one here, this one here's got me running around, you know. She's running the house. She's running the house. <laughs> people are always like, oh, my God, he's so nice. Such a great family, man. And I'm just sitting thinking in my head, like, dude, that guy is a fucking psycho. He's a psycho. Look at his eyes. You don't see that? That dude is barely hanging on. He's white knuckling it through all the shit he thinks he's supposed to do. All that fucking guy needs, all he needs, he just needs a little nudge. That's it. Just a little nudge. You have no idea what that guy's capable of. I would not want to see the hard drive of that man's computer. I'm telling you. Yeah, so... I do it all the time. I'm pretty good at it, picking out psychos, and it drives my wife nuts. Like, I remember, like, she was one of the first people that got into Kanye West, right? The great Kanye West. Everybody loves him and stuff, right? Oh, shut up. Jesus Christ, why did I come to Nashville? Boo, it's a black artist. You're bringing it up in the rhyming. What the fuck? It's the Grand Ole Opry, man. It's not MTV raps. But I'm stereotyping you. I'm acting like because you're from the South that automatically you're racist. Like all the racists are just down here. That isn't true. They're, they, you know, they're all over the place. <laughs> it's just different degrees. Right? Like me, I'm racist like at the end of the day. Like I'm a great fucking guy. I don't give a shit who you are. In the morning, you're eating your cereal. Hey, how are you? What's going on? But as the sun starts to go down and the fear starts coming up, that's when you start thinking the worst of people, right? I know. Nobody's going to be honest. I don't give a fuck who you are. 12 midnight in a parking garage by yourself. Whatever is walking at you, there's no happy thoughts. You're not thinking like, oh, that guy, he just, he's probably, uh, he's probably building a website, and uh, you're not thinking that. That dude's going to cut me up, eat me, whatever he doesn't eat, he's going to fuck. That's what you think, right? All right? But if you do that at night, that's normal, I think, because it's fear. It's, if, it's the people at breakfast that are already just sitting there like fucking Jews, you know? That's when you got an issue. So, so anyways... I just got to do this. You know, when you talk about race and that type of shit, you know, as a white dude, you just got to go easy, you know? It's very easy. It starts feeling like a meeting, you know? Whenever I start hearing like, yeah, all right, woo! That's what I go, all right, I got to pull back a little bit. People aren't seeing what I'm saying. I wore a country shirt. Things are getting a little off the rails here. Can I get back to Kanye West? Half of you probably downloaded his shit, all right? All right, here we go. So my wife got freaked out because I told him, like, she was, early on, she was loving the guy. And, and I, I was, th you know, thinking he was cool. And then one day I saw him do an interview, and he was talking shit about how great he was. And there was just this look that was in his eye, and it just made me nervous. I'm like, dude, this guy is, uh, this guy is, like, this guy's volatile, man. There's something with this guy. He's making me nervous. This guy is, like, right on the edge of, like, snapping, right? She goes, ah, oh, you're out of your mind. And I was thinking, ah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think this guy's fucked up. And then I was convinced because one day I came walking in and she was listening to him do an interview and I didn't know it was him. And he was just in the middle of talking about how great he was. And I came walking in and all I did was hear this shit. And like literally a chill ran down my spine. And I just started thinking like, no, no, no. And I turned and I looked before it even registered that it was Kanye. My first thought was, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. 
It's just a black guy. Ah! Oh, thank God. It's just a black guy. Yeah, I know. You're right to pull back. This is right to get awkward here because you don't know where this could go. This could very easily go in a clannish direction. Okay? So just let me clarify. Just hear me out. I'm thinking, thank God it's a black guy. Meaning, thank God that ego that is in him, when that thing floated down from the heavens, or the cosmos, whatever the hell Joel Olstein shit you believe, all right? When that thing was floating down, it could have landed in anybody. Thank God it landed in a black guy. Thank God it got wrapped up in that, trapped within that. It's safe in there. No reason to worry when it's in there. Because if that ego, however, had floated down and landed in a blue-eyed white dude, there is no telling the damage that could have been done. You're talking entire civilizations wiped out, worldwide famine, the moon colliding with the earth. Thank God that ego landed in a black guy. Because he's just as nuts as some of the craziest white dudes of all time. He just doesn't have the opportunity to follow through with the madness. Right? Yeah, there's a glass ceiling on evil. You never noticed that? Dude, go home, put on the History Channel. Like the top nine out of ten most batshit crazy dudes who ever walked the earth are all white dudes. Now why is that? Because white dudes are more evil than anybody else? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. We definitely got the numbers. But I think it's different. I just think, you know what it is? Nobody's watching white dudes. All right? White dudes don't. Too many of them gather and somebody pulls up. All right, break it up. Keep it moving. Get out of here. Getting pulled over for no fucking reason. None of that shit. You're a white dude. It's just an open field. Anything you think, hey, I'm going to do that. No one's stopping you. You just, yeah, you just start running. Next thing you know, you're handing out buttons. You got your own uniform. You're starting a fucking war, right? All Kanye West is allowed to do is fuck up an award show every three to four years. Make a public service announcement a little awkward for Mike Myers. That's as far as he's ever going to get. <laughs> I know, I know. You don't believe me, do. Okay. Next time Kanye's going off on himself, I'm telling you, just close your eyes, forget it's him, and really listen to what is coming out of this guy's mouth. He says shit like, I'm a genius. I'm a god. I'm Shakespeare. My biggest regret is I'll never get to see myself perform live. That's a direct quote. My biggest regret is I'll never get to see myself perform live. Dude, you put that ego in a white dude that is it benign in the Streisen. What's the Blitzkrieg? What's the superior race? Vienna will return to Deutschland first. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, but we're, we're okay. We're okay. It's in a black guy. Nothing's going to happen. You never notice that shit? Crazy black guys, the, the far as they can get, they can just freak people out on the subway. They can stand on a street corner with their book and their friends just yelling about white people. These people, they got tails. The motherfuckers got tails. They're evil. And you just cross the street. That's it. In a perfect world, Hitler never would have made it past the subway level. That's as far as he ever would have got. You would have just been sitting on the train. Hey, what are you going to do tonight? I play a little fantasy football. I don't know. And the door just opened. He just come walking through. Once oh, they should have the blue eyes and the blonde hair and the pubes like the sun. And you're just sitting there like, okay, just ignore him. Just ignore him. Let him pass through. Let him pass through. And he just walk into the other part of the train. Literally a world war. Just passing through. But he was a white dude. No one watched him. And his hair was flopping around. And nobody gave a fuck. All right? So that's kind of like the weird lesson that I learned with Kanye West. You know? Like every once in a while, racism works. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, it's the ugliest thing we do to one another. But every once in a while, we get lucky, and that marble, it just it rolls into the right hole. And we get off easy. We get off easy with that guy. I gotta commend you.
you guys. You, you did well with the Hitler reference. You did all right. Nothing quiets a room like dropping the H bomb. You bring up Adolf Hitler, it gets fucking quiet to this day. This dude fucking, he, he died like, what, 75 fucking years ago? Allegedly, you know? Some people think he went down to South America on fire. They're so brown, right, for the rest of his life. At this point, even if he lived, he's fucking dead, right? We can go with that, right? <laughs> but still, to this day, though, even though he died, let's say, 75 fucking years ago, he's still the benchmark for evil. Have you ever noticed that? He is the reference. Anytime you want to say somebody's evil, you just say, he is the next Hitler. Donald Trump, he's the next Hitler. Saddam Hussein, he's the next Hitler. It's always, he's the next Hitler. Okay? I don't know what the fuck they used to say before Hitler came around, right? <laughs> he's the next Genghis Khan. He's the next Napoleon. I, I don't know. Ivan the Terrible. I don't, I don't know what they said. But whatever they used to say, he wiped them all out. He was so fucked up. It's like what they did didn't even exist anymore. All right? It's like when Michael Jordan came into the NBA. He was so fucking good. He wiped out everyone. No one ever goes, he's the next Dr. J. He's the next Wilt. No one says that. It's always, he's the next Mike. Right? Adolf Hitler is the Michael Jordan of evil. He is. Like, Nike literally should have made him a sneaker. Like, like a giant fucking boot. You know, it's all stiff around your knees so you get that walk going down. Right? Like if there was an evil Hall of Fame, you got to put Hitler in. He's first ballot Hall of Fame evil. Okay? Undeniable stats. He's got the career numbers, you know? Six to nine million dingers. You're getting in. You're getting in. Ah. People, it's a sports analogy. I'm not advocating what the man did. Can we all be adults here? All right? Am I going to be on a split screen tomorrow morning with some blogger? Some Good Morning Nashville show? Comedy, can it go too far? Last night at the Ryman Theater, making fun of fat people, sinking cruise ships was all fine. Suddenly, it took a horrible, horrible turn. Fortunately, local blogger Maggie Magenhall was on the scene. Maggie, can you describe what you were subjected to during last night's horrible rant? Well, first of all, everybody that knows me knows I have a great sense of humor. I think this is funny. I think that is funny. But that last night, that was not funny. <laughs> it always goes down like that. They always have to establish what a wonderful sense of humor they have. No, it's a sports analogy. Okay? Six to nine million. He got all of that one. He had power from both sides of the plate. He'd have his own fucking wing. Okay? But this is what kills me about Hitler. Killed six to nine million people. Meanwhile, Stalin killed 20 to 25 million. Basically over the exact same period. Okay? Yet, he cannot get arrested in the conversation of most fucked up dude who ever walked the planet. It's always, he's the next Hitler. He's the next Hitler. Why well, many... How many fucking people do you have to kill just to get a little shout out? A little tip of the cat. What do you think of this guy? It's always, he's the next Hitler. How about every once in a while? This guy's a little Stalinist. I see a little Jojo in this guy, right? He almost tripled his fucking numbers. He, he gets brought up like he was a backup. Why don't his kills count? Is anybody... Anybody, why doesn't his fucking kills count? I don't get, is, is it because he just looked like some regular guy, like your neighbor, you know? Driving a little John Deere. Hey, I just killed a million Ukrainians. Meet me. Just drives around his yard. Is that what it is? I think it is. Hitler just, I don't know, he just looked the part. He's like from central casting. You couldn't pick a more evil looking dude. Like, go home tonight. Google pictures of Adolf Hitler. Get put on the same watch list that I'm on. All right? I'm telling you, there's not one cute picture of that guy his whole life. It's just all pure evil. There's no, like, teenage, like, boy band years. Like... <laughs> you Google a picture of Adolf as a baby. You look at that thing, you're like, dude, drown that fucking thing. Drown it. Take it down to the river. Stick it under a rock. If you don't do it, I'm going to fucking do it. I swear to God, it's looking at me. I would kick it right in its baby chest and feel no guilt whatsoever. 
Dude, Hitler is actually so evil, he actually makes me want to learn how to speak German. You know what I mean? Because I just want to know, like, what the fuck was he saying to those people? Every speech, he's so clearly out of his fucking mind. It's got to be what he's saying. The fuck did he say? There's no way he said what he planned on doing from the get-go. Some unknown candidate, right, early on. Okay, our next speaker coming to the stage to possibly run Deutschland for the foreseeable future. His name is, um, oh dear, I left my glasses backstage. Is, is that Alan? Is it Alan? Oh, Adolf. Adolf. Okay. A oh, okay. Okay. Whew, this guy's got to be in his body. Okay, please welcome Adolf Hitler. You got three minutes, buddy. What I'm going to kill millions of people. I know what they should look like. The eyeballs sit there and beat their butt. I have the ovens for the rest of the people. Dude, you can't come out of the gates talking to crowds like that. You're going to freak them out. You can't go that hard in the beginning. You know? You can do that in the woods with a couple of trinket buddies. Freaking people out. Like, hey, Matt, relax. There's girls here. Jesus Christ. I think I got a shot here. I'm trying to get laid. Can you just be a wingman? For once in your life, dude, can you just be a fucking... Just bring the energy down. Nobody gives a fuck about your fucking theories. Okay? Just be a chill guy. You got shit on the side of your mouth. You either grow a mustache or don't. You look ridiculous. I'm sorry, ladies. He gets a little excited. You know what I think he was doing? I think he was just, I think he was just being a crowd-pleasing hack, if I had to guess. He's just telling those Germans what they wanted to hear. Once we have the best cars, we have the best women, Oktoberfest is a shit! And he's just shooting free t-shirts up. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking armbands, right? I don't know, it's just something that's always bothered me. Not always, just recently. I'm just going like, this guy kills six to fucking nine. Everybody's, we definitely don't want another one of those. Well, what about this guy, 20 to fucking 25? You know? You know what it is? There's probably a couple of egghead history majors out there going, well, Bill, if we're going to go around the world, you know? What about that dude Mao from China? He allegedly killed 50 to 60 million people. What about that guy? How come you don't bring him up? Simple. I don't count those kills. <laughs> I don't. I don't count them. Dude, there's like a billion people in China. You wipe out on a scooter, you're going to kill 80, not even trying. 50 to 60 million, that, that's like steroid era stats. It's like, get the fuck out of here. What do you want? Come on. I'm supposed to believe that number? That's like when a second baseman would have like 50 jacks. It's like, dude, you had 20 in high school. Get the fuck out of here. 50 home runs. I don't get it. I just don't get why. You know, I'm really feeling it whenever I do this bit. I always feel the crowd. You guys just, you just don't like a sports analogy. You know? <laughs> Let's go music, all right? It's Nashville. We'll look at it in a musical way. All right? Okay. Hitler drops an album. He sells six to nine million copies. All right? He's got a couple of summertime jams, maybe a prom song. He just catches a moment. He has his own dance, like Gangnam style, except, you know, it's got a little more with the hands. Right? It's more of an upper body song. Then later on that summer, Stalin drops his new shit. He sells 20 to 25 million copies. 20 to 25 million copies is Michael Jackson's Thriller. Okay? One of the greatest artists, one of the greatest albums of all time. Six to nine million in sales, that's like Hootie and the Blowfish cracked rearview mirror. Now, if you guys were at home in your apartment or your fucking barn, whatever it is you do down here, sitting there with your lantern, uh, and you're sound asleep, Next to your favorite bale of hay. You sound asleep. And someone came running in at three in the morning and go, dude, you gotta run down to the bar. It's the next Michael Jackson, I swear to God. You would consider it. Michael Jackson, I gotta fucking see that. You'd actually maybe get it. But if somebody came running in and woke you up like, dude, you gotta see this guy. He's the next hoodie and a blowfish, right? You'd smash him over the head with your fucking lantern or whatever the hell you got in there. Why don't his fucking kills count? Dude, Stalin, he even killed his own friends. Hitler didn't even do that. 
Dude, you go duck hunting with Stalin. You thought you were in with him. He's taking pictures with you and shit. It's all fucking good, right? Then like a week later, you parted your hair a little bit different. He got paranoid, and that was it. He whacked you. That's it. Not only that, he then had you erased out of the photo. You know, next thing you know, Stalin's like hugging a tree or some shit like that. This guy was photoshopping people out of photos like 60 years before the technology existed. He changed the fucking game. <laughs> yeah, so I watch a lot of the YouTube videos, right? So the other night, my wife, lovely wife, she's like falling asleep, and I can't fall asleep because I'm all scatterbrained, so I just start watching some YouTube clips, okay? And I end up seeing this clip of this lady down at the zoo, all right? This lady down at the zoo, who I'm sure wasn't making as much money as the guy who worked at the zoo, and that's what needs to stop. <laughs> hey, ladies, you ever think of opening your own zoo, you know? Is there a reason you wait till we build the whole fucking thing and then, then you're going to show up when all the hard work is done? All the animals are captured, then you're going to show Hey, where's my fucking corner office? Yeah. Start your own fucking zoo. Go out and go catch a cobra. See how that is. It's not the point of the story. I just like, I just like being a dick sometimes. So this lady down at the zoo. This lady down at the zoo. She taught this gorilla how to do sign language. Okay? And I don't just mean like hello and goodbye, like literally phrases. This thing could like like talk about its emotions. They were actually conversing. The grill was sitting there talking to her. Oh my God, you look a little upset today. She's like, oh, you know, I'm kind of sad. And they're just talking. So immediately, like my brain just went fucking crazy. I was like, oh my God, she's talking to a gorilla. I love gorillas. Who doesn't want to talk to a gorilla? And then without thinking that my wife is sleeping, I just blurted out, ask it how much it can bench. Ask it how much it can bench. My wife, like, pops up. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, look at this. Look at this. She's talking to a gorilla. And we, we both just got sucked into this thing. Right? So long story short, she's sitting there. She's talking to this gorilla. And one day, she decides to get a little kitten. A little kitty cat. Right? And immediately, I'm thinking, like, don't get it a cat. It's a gorilla. It's going to twist the thing's head off. Throw the body over there. Play with the head for a while. <laughs> sniffing it and stuff. And then later, it's going to walk over it. Set the head down next to the body and wonder why the whole thing's not getting up again. Because it's a fucking gorilla. It's a wild animal. Wild animals don't have pets, right? It's kill or be killed out there. That's it. They don't have little parakeets on their shoulders and shit. But it was the exact opposite. She gives it this little kitten and the thing immediately understood that it was a baby and this like parental thing came over. It was so like gentle and filled with joy and just play. It was like beautiful, right? And then they, they just understood that it loved this kitten and they started using it as like a teaching tool, right? So, so every night they take the cat back, all right? And then the next day they come in and if the gorilla learned its phrases, it got to play with the kitten. They use it as a motivational tool. So the gorilla's like vocabulary started going through the roof. All right. So to cut to the chase, one night they take the cat home. Somehow the little kitten gets out. It got hit by a car and it died. Yeah, that cat you never met died. <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. I know you knew it all of it for fucking 20 seconds. You know, I don't know if it was dead instantly. Like if it drove right over its head and whoop, that was it. Or maybe it just hit the back legs and it tried to crawl away, but it was it was like stuck to the road and it was it was meowing out and it could see its breath. And right before it lost consciousness, the rats came in and it was it was just screaming and it had such cute little paws. It was like little socks trying to get it off. I don't know what happened, but you seem so fucking concerned about this kitten. I figured I'd throw out a couple of theories. More concerned about the kitten than all the Hitler shit, by the way. More of a reaction. More of a reaction. That's fine. Every crowd's a little bit different. It's not the point of the story. Okay? The point of the story was now this lady had to go down to the zoo. She had to tell the gorilla that the kitten was dead. Right? So she comes back down to the zoo, and the gorilla's all amped up. This is like its favorite part of the day. And its mind is engaged, and it sees its little friend. And at this point, its, it's vocabulary is like crazy now. The lady shows up, the gorilla's all amped up, and just looks at her just like, Oh, shit! What's up? Yeah! Right? Now, I can't do sign language, so you're going to have to bear with me through the rest of this bit. I'm going to do the best I can, all right? So the thing's like, What's up? Yeah! 
All right? But the zookeeper lady, she, she has like, you know, just sitting there all sad, you know, trying to think how she's going to tell it, right? And the gorilla picked up on the vibe. All right? She's kind of like, uh, hello. All right? And all of a sudden, the gorilla's energy just comes all down. She just starts looking at the lady like, uh, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's wrong with you? Is there something that I, I, I need to know? Huh? <laughs> so the lady's sitting there. She's like, uh, ah, Jesus. Uh, well, well, the, the, the kitty cat, it got hit by a car and it's fucking dead. took it in. It immediately took it in and understood. Like its bottom lip started quivering. Its eyes started watering up. It was signing like crying. And they go, and later on that night, you could hear it crying inside of its house. They built it a house. I don't know why. They live in trees. It's probably the guilt of putting the thing in a fucking jail, right? Whatever. It was like a two bedroom. It sounded like it was in the kitchen. And you just hear this thing in this house at night just go like, <laughs> And that was the end of the video. <laughs> that was the end of the video. And like you, I was sitting there like, what the fuck? You're going to end on that? And then literally, right in that moment, I felt my wife's head just rest on my shoulder. She was like, that was so sad. I mean, it was beautiful, but it was sad. And I was just like, get off me. <laughs> just, just get off me. And I closed the laptop, set it down on the nightstand, and I just got up and I started pacing. It's this fucking rage was coming up in me. My wife's like freaking out. She's like, what's wrong? What is wrong with you? And I'm just like, what do you mean what's wrong? That, that, that video is fucked up. <laughs> what is the purpose of that? You teach a gorilla how to talk. You're shooting the shit. You get it a pet kitten. And then it dies, and then the gorilla cries, and it's fucking sad, and then that's it? That's what you're leaving me with? I gotta walk around with that in my fucking head? How was that the end of the video? Somebody, for fuck's sakes, tell me. Dude, that gorilla understood the concept of death. If it understands the concept of death, it understands its own captivity. Okay? So it never dawned on that lady that whole time she's shooting the shit with them. It never dawned on her to sign to the thing like, like, hey, like... Do you want to get, get the fuck out of here? Do you hate it in here? Do you want to fucking kill us for sticking you in here away from your friends in the jungle? And the thing would be like, yeah, yeah, pl please get me out. I beg of you. It fucking sucks in here. Right? And then you could have brainstormed, right? Like, okay. Okay, I'm going to get you out of here. And then the only bad part would be you'd have to deal with the gorilla and it's, it's, it's crazy fucking gorilla idea. You know what I mean? Like brainstorming, it's an escape plan. The gorilla would be like, okay, we'll get a bunch of bananas, we'll throw them and distract them and then we'll climb out just using our arms. And then you literally just have to sit there going like, okay, okay, uh, uh, not, not trying to, to be a dick, but I have a better idea. No, 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 no disrespect to you, okay? But I, I'm going to go to big and tall. I'm going to get a jacket, a hat, and some fucked up looking shoes, okay? And what I need from you, what I need from you, okay? What I need from you is you, you, you got to lay off this shit, all right? No more of this. Okay, no, 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 no disrespect, okay? I need you, I need you to man up. All right? Stand up straight. Arm down. Stand up straight. Here's the difficult part. Right here. Okay? Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. You got it? Bam! Bam! All right? You get that shit down. I'll get you out of here in, in, in 10 days. Cool? Okay, good deal. Ah, fuck. 
right. See you in 10 days, right? It's like the first day of the grill is sitting there going like, okay, okay. jail, right? You show up at night, look what you're doing, you're fucking doing it, put on the jacket and the hat, come on, you take him down to the car, that's the only way to get it back, you gotta take it by car, down to the harbor, it's the only way to get it back to the jungle, you can't go to the fucking airport, right? You can't go to the airport, standing there going through that fucking security, right? <laughs> Once he takes his shoes off and that thumb comes sticking out, it's fucking over, it's over, you keep it below deck, you keep the fucking thing, Below deck until you get out to international waters. Then you fight. It's Captain's Law. Come on board, right? Have the thing sit down. Other boats going by looking at you like, is that a gorilla? Yeah. What do you got, blood diamonds? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Fucking sex slaves, get out of here. I'll have it come aboard and rip that mask right off. Then you're just hanging with the gorilla. You get to have that experience of seeing the thing free for the first time. It comes over the horizon, it finally sees the jungle, it's getting all excited, it jumps off the boat, it's rolling around in the sand, you're like, buddy, we did it, don't fuck up the coat, I gotta bring it back, we did it, all right, get out of here, I love you too, man, I'm gonna miss you, get out of here before they see you, right? And the thing runs right to the edge of the jungle, and it just, poof, disappears. Like, it did it. No, do you wanna go see his friends, man? You wanna be free, it's gonna be fucking great. He's gonna go meet his buddies, he's gonna talk to his friends now, like he should be, right? He's, uh, he's, he's gonna go talk to his friends. Well, probably teach them how to talk. And of course, I'll probably get horses. Did I just start Planet of the Fucking Apes? He's gonna teach his friends how to talk and get horses? Dude, I gotta kill this fucking thing! I gotta kill it. I fucked up. I gotta kill it. I'm sorry. I got. Where's my Glock? Where the fuck is my Glock? Where is it? Where? It's right here. It was right here. Fuck. And you got a little six shooter. Fuck it. I'll take this. And you run to the jungle. But it's a gorilla, so it's long gone. But you can't give up, man. All the society's gonna go down on you. You gotta kill this fucking thing. So you just trudge it through the jungle for months. You get six, seven months in. You got like malaria. You're about ready to give up. And out of nowhere, that your buddy just jumps down. Boom. Just like. Oh, shit! What the fuck are you doing here? You just pull out your six-shooter. Sorry, buddy. I gotta do it. The girl be like, But... I, 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 I thought we were friends. Why? Well, you know, because... Because Jesus wanted it that way. Yeah? It's this whole book. He made us in his image, which, which is, you know, we're, we're better than you, you know? Sorry, I can't have you talking to other fucking chimps and then you tear down the Statue of Liberty. I just... Everyone's going to think I'm an asshole. I, I, I... Look, I'll make it quick. And right as you go to pull the trigger, the gorilla pulls out that Glock you couldn't find. <laughs> I just, I just 
just want to know one thing. How, how did you know? You knew before I knew. I don't have an ending for this. <laughs> I don't. And in a weird way, now you know how I felt when I watched that video. You know what it was? You know what it was? Was I did that joke all around the country, all right? And the gorilla always died. Because Jesus wanted it that way. And that was it. And it fucking bombed in every goddamn city in this country except for Dallas, Texas. That was the only place where they got it. And I'm not shitting on Texas. It, it, it bombed in Houston, Austin, El Paso, San Antonio. Killed in Dallas. They're the only ones who got it. They were just like, hey, man, you did what you had to do. You did what you had to do, man. I mean, I love that gorilla, too, but God damn it, you cannot have two species working together. I'll tell you right now, you get a couple of gorillas on a bareback horse with a single bolt action rifle. That is the end of society as we know it. You should get a hypothetical medal for killing that gorilla, <laughs> hypothetically. So, all right. I'll, I'm going to end with a quick little story here, okay? Okay, they're always talking about how to make a woman happy, but I don't think they do it enough to help you guys out how to make a man happy, right? The great thing about men is we're fucking simple. We're fucking simple, okay? So here's the thing right here. You want to make a guy happy? If you're with a good guy, okay, this is also all you got to do, okay? How about four times a year, once a season? go out to the kitchen without him saying shit you go out to the kitchen you make a sandwich you get him a beer you walk out you give it to him you don't say a word and you just fucking leave <laughs> that's all you gotta do every three months you do that you keep him happy that's all it takes now I know right out of the gate this is coming off sexist right it's because I'm saying go out to the kitchen make your man a sandwich I'm not saying women belong in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant rubbing my balls I'm not saying that. Okay? I'm just saying, women, go in the kitchen. Just go in the kitchen four times in a year. Make a sandwich. A toddler could do that. Just put it together. Grab two slices of pre-made, pre-sliced bread. Two handfuls of pre-murdered meat. Put a little mustard on it. Grab a beer. Walk out. Just hand it to him, don't say shit, and then fucking leave. And when I say leave, I mean leave. I don't mean walk into another room for like 10 minutes and then stick your head back and just be like, did you like it? Was it good? Great. Because downstairs, we need to, don't yell at me, I just made you a sandwich. I don't mean that. I mean leave. Get in the car and fucking get out of here. Take the kids, drive down the street, go see Lord of the Rings a couple of times, and leave your man in the stunned silence of what you just did. If you ever want to see your guy get emotional, you ever want to see a man get emotional, you make him a fucking sandwich that he didn't ask for. I'm telling you, he's going to have to dry the tears with the bread. He's going to be so shocked. Like, you made this for me? And I didn't even ask? Oh, my God. I think she still gives a fuck. Quick story, me and my wife bought a house in 2011, and by me and my wife, I mean I paid for it, right? <laughs> she hates that joke, but I don't give a shit. It's true. And she's always breaking my balls. Don't put your shoes over here, they belong over there. Yeah, well, I bought over there, and I bought over here, so I'll put my fucking shoes wherever I want to. Oh, shirt's coming off, where's it going? Right? So we get into the house, she's scoping out the house because she's smart, she's finding the rooms to get sun, she's checking out the closet space, and me, like an idiot, I want to check out the garage. For whatever reason, I'm drawn to this thing, and I go down, I open the door, and the last people hadn't cleaned it out. There was like a busted refrigerator, an old file cabinet, an ab roller, something from a luau, there was like seven failed businesses in this goddamn thing, and I gotta start lugging this shit out in like 90 degree weather, as a redhead, hating my life, Right? I got three hours into this job. My forearms were cut. I had dirt, sweat, cobwebs all over me. I wanted to burn down this fucking house. I was ready to leave, but out of nowhere, my wife showed up. Big smile on her face, and she'd made me a sandwich. 
cut it in half diagonally, which is love, right? They don't cut it in half. They might as well frisbee it at you. Like, here you go, you fucking piece of shit. Hose yourself off. You should live out here. You should live out here, right? Cut it in half diagonally, poured Fritos in the middle, and gave me an ice cold beer. She did that five years ago. Do you know to this day, every once in a while, I still think about that sandwich. It's unbelievable. It just pops in my head like this fond memory. I'll just be by myself talking in the car. Remember that time she made me a sandwich? That was unbelievable. She cut it in half, Fritos with an ice cold beer. I felt like a king. That's all it takes. You know what it felt like at that moment? If, you, remember that, you remember that movie, uh, Shawshank Redemption? You know that scene where the prisoners are drinking the beer on the rooftop with the sun in their face? That's what it felt like. The only thing missing was Morgan Freeman's voice narrating over the top. And for 20 minutes, Bill Burr felt like a free man. All right, I'm out of time. You guys were so awesome. Thank you so much.